He said he would give people a little cut on their finger and it took longer to heal among lonely people. Yes. Um, so, you know, even just a basic body process of, you know, the skin repairing a slight, a slight cut, uh, it goes more slowly uh, for people who don't have, have people who care about them. Yes, I think I read somewhere about an experiment where one professor injected virus uh, into participants and those who are loners were four times more likely to get uh, ill, get the symptoms than those who had many friends and attachments. I, I don't know the study, but I believe it. Uh, there are findings like that. And, and yes, people who are alone in the world have, have more illnesses, both mental and physical. Uh, the next question, since we are speaking about, in a way, in a, on a mental, we are talking about mental health, in a way, uh, we had a short Q&A with Martin Seligman, and I asked him, uh, what is the future of psychology? So this is the same question for you. And then he told me, I will quote him, uh, turning toward what enables the good life, turning away from merely working on alleviating what cripples life. And uh, what would be your, you know, I, didn't, I can say suggestion for young psychologists, what should we focus on? What is the future of psychology? Well, I, <laughs> I study how people think about the future and one classic line is never make predictions, especially about the future. <laughs> so we don't understand. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've always had a very positive view of psychology and I think we're learning more and our methods are getting better. Uh, but in the last uh, few years, I am more discouraged that in, in the United States, uh, psychology research has become much more oriented toward uh, left-wing political causes, social justice, and uh, attacking people who don't have the right opinions. So I, I think it's hard to pursue the truth and pursue a political goal at the same time. Um, for me, I'm clearly on the side of I just want to know what the truth is, whether I like it or not. And I'm a generalist, which means I try to study lots of different things. And if you do that, you just get used to many things don't turn out the way you want them to be. But now the strong political views, uh, they insist that only certain findings can be published and contrary uh, ideas may not be considered. So I think I see psychology heading into a difficult period. I want to encourage people in the field to do good scientific research, but that probably means staying away from all fields that have any sort of political uh, implication because uh, it's just become uh, very, very strong. Uh, but but that, that, that is a great claim if someone uh, from your status says it. Uh, have we got corrupted as a, you know, <laughs> it's very dangerous then for our whole profession, you know. We, we got, we, have we gotten compromised? I, I, I think so very much. I'm I'm not happy about it. It's it's one reason. I mean, one of my favorite things that I've enjoyed doing is helping young researchers get started to get their PhDs or their postdoctoral fellowships. And I've I've really reduced doing that. I haven't completely stopped, but um, mostly I've stopped. It's just because the field is not welcoming. I can't say that this is a great career, and the idea that we should just follow the data and pursue the truth, whatever it tells us, this is more and more out of fashion. Uh, and uh, as the people with these political attitudes take over more of the field, they are getting more nasty toward anyone who says or questions anything uh, of what you're supposed to believe. So uh, be become a lot of personal attacks. Um, so, Yes, I am not a future of psychology. I don't think in the long run uh, that uh, it will revive and that the, the, 
the idea of using the scientific method to understand people is, a, is an important one and a, a basic one. And so maybe that, uh, maybe that will resume uh, at some point. Also, don't lose hope. <laughs> you have to continue, you know? All right, yes. Uh, th there is no stopping. <laughs> We have to, you know, well, not nobody has hasn't doesn't have to do anything, but uh, it would be. Uh, I, I think there is so much more you can produce, and uh, start this race toward toward the new psychology. Yes, so I wish there were a place where the the psychologists who who just want to study people and develop scientific knowledge. Uh, where we could hide and be safe from the, uh, the the political ones who say no, no, that's not the right idea. You have to, uh, you shouldn't even think those thoughts. Well, th th that was one question. I I was I told you this over the email that uh, our colleague, <laughs> Professor Jordan Peterson, is somewhere near in Belgrade. What is, what is your opinion of his phenomenon? You know, like uh, uh, because. <laughs> there are people who like him, don't like him, you know, respect him. And, uh... Yes, uh, I've known him for a long time. Um, we were at some conferences together and you know, had some similar research interests and so on. He was always an unusual thinker um, and uh, very smart and engaging. Um, his research had... had uh, you know, I'd used some aspects of it, but I, I wasn't heavily involved. Uh, more recently, but he's become this phenomenon by standing up for freedom to think and talk on your own. I think that's that's very good. And uh, I don't know all the details of his uh, opinions and so on, but uh, uh, his idea of, of not giving in to these political pressures that you have to think a certain way and talk a certain way and be a certain way. Uh, I think that's, that's important and that's much needed. And so uh, uh, and I think he's spoken a lot to young men and our, our society is, is much more concerned about young women than young men, uh, certainly in the United States and Canada. And so I think they just had the feeling that no one cares about them. Uh, so having someone make even rather simple basic points engaging with him i think that's that's uh, good for society also i think he's he's very brave in some aspects you know because of this need to conform this pressure right. you feel it's like gravity that's you know it's hard we always i always look for somebody else you know to stand up and say something but uh, yes no the, the the thought control the stifling alternative ideas and telling people they're not allowed to think certain thoughts or study certain topics or or test certain theories that has become a very unfortunate and very powerful development in the field so uh yes i think it takes courage for someone like 